In this video, we're going to focus on how to create a bubble chart in Chart.js. So basically, this will be a Chart.js bu uh, bubble chart example, where we show you how to make one, but we also convert it into the standard, which is now more and more common in the Chart.js documentation. All right, so we have a blank, blank uh, browser here. So what we're going to do first is to add up our default chart, which we can find here. So if you go to chartjs.org, scroll down here and get this one here. To do that, make sure you have the latest version. That's the current one I use is 3.4. You can see here at the very bottom, you have a button. Click on that, you copy everything. All right. And we're going to paste this in here. Once you paste this in here, give it a proper indentation. And then what I want to do here is the following. I want to delete this here. We're going to control our own width on this and do an enter here. And here I want to add up first the chart.js library so i click on your getting started click on getting started sub menu and then here below you'll find the link i'll just copy this and paste it in here so once i have this i want to continue on by nest this canvas id in a div so i'm going to put in a div and there's a class and in here i will say this will be my chart box class so with a capital b here this is nested within within the div and in here, I will set up a fixed width. I'll just copy this class and put in here, open it here, style. So we're going to do a uh, style here. Enter and then put in here style or the chart box, class chart box. And in here, we'll say width 700 pixels. All right, so once I save this, go back here to the browser, refresh, you will see now we have this here. But now this is, of course, a bar chart. What I want to do first before we even continue on converting it into a bubble chart, I want to put this here in the correct order. So this is the order that is now more and more common. And if you understand the examples, or if you understand this, you will understand the examples that Chart.js uses now far more better. All right, so there's three standard blocks here. And there's more, of course, depending on certain cases and if you have any add-ons in there, etc., etc. However, what is important is basically these three blocks in these orders you have the setup block next we have the configuration block or the config block and finally we have the init which is which, uh, which means initialization or also known as the render block all right so once you have these what we're going to do is we're going to convert all of this into these blocks so how to do it first of all you're going to create a setup block the setup block starts with a constant of data equals all the data make sure you have a semicolon here at the end that equals all the data here so what we're going to do is down here you see here this data this can be ignored because we need everything between here so if i click on this you will see it connects to this one here so that means that this here just between here we will grab cut it out paste it in here all right so that's the first one that we're done the next one what we want is we just basically the skeleton contains of three or the three foundation blocks of the chart which is the type the data and the options so we're going to grab all of this cut this out create here a new constant and this constant will be named config or configuration so this is basically our configuration which is equal to curly brackets and then semicolon at the end and in this paste all of the codes that we have so once we did this oh make sure that this is correct here we have the data and i'll just put this first proper but then after we need to adjust the data as well you can grab this put it in here all right all right and all right so what we need to move here is basically the data remember we have here this variable of data and this is the reason why you need to have the setup block first because we need to load first the constant of data and then we say here in the config config where it has a reference to the data. I'll just put in data, comma. We have that one there. And then of course, finally we have here the initialization block or the rendering block. And in here we do the following. We'll say here, this will be a constant and this constant will be named my chart. Exactly the same, why? Because we have our uh, canvas, which has the name of my chart. So here we're going to initialize, initialize it. So we say my chart equals, and then what do we say here? New chart with capital C. So what we're doing here, I'll just put in a semicolon first. All right. Pay attention. These are parentheses. They are not curly braces. 
or curly brackets. I think it's curly braces, sorry. Curly braces like here. These are parentheses why we're working now with a basically here what we're making is a constructor. So it's different from what we do here above. So what we're doing now here in this constructor, which consists of all of this data here above, has the following. Basically, this piece of code here, from beginning to mid, mid here, this here can be ignored. The reason why the new Charge.js, Charge.js version 3, 3, is able to understand that this here, with this constructor, it understands that it refers to a canvas. And this basically means you draw something in a canvas element with the ID name of my chart. So it's already understood that, so it's given. So we can just only cut out this part here. We cut out this, and then you say comma. And then what we want is, what do we want to draw, basically? Well, everything we have in our variable or constant of config. So we say here, configuration. Go to configuration, and there we are. So once we did this, delete all this, save, refresh. All right, everything works now accordingly, and it works now. But the structure is similar to the day, uh, documentation. Now what I want to do is I want to create a new type of chart, which is our bubble chart. So we type in here bubble, save that. Refresh. Now we have a bubble chart. You can see the bubble chart have a different x-axis where it works with basically a scattered st style of axis where we have a multiple data. We have x and y. And you see nothing because we don't have the data in the correct format that we should have for a bubble chart. So that's what we're going to do right now. So in here, we need to work with new data. And what we're going to do is just putting in enter. And in here, we're going to work with the data. We use here the curly braces and in here we say the following data and how it works is following we indicate here the value on the x-axis for example we want here number one so we say x equals one there will be somewhere here but probably our chart will be adjusted by that time and then we say maybe x equals 10 or, or sorry y equals 10 so it will be somewhere here and then we need to indicate the size of the bubble which is the r the radius and the radius would be x amount of pixels so let's start and do that so we say x equals number one and then we say y equals let's say five points and then comma r which is the radius should be five pixels so once we have this we save this refresh you can see now it pinpoints number one to five and then five pixels here and you can see also the value shown one comma five comma five which is matching here so what I'm going to do now is because right now it grabs the red color why does it get the red color it's basically here we have the background color indicator I'm going to copy this let's do this five more times comma paste comma paste comma paste comma paste comma paste comma paste uh, alright no need for comma in the last one and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put in some new values so we will incrementally increase it. So one, two, three, four, five, etc., etc. Five and six. All right, and, and then this will be changed as well. Let's make this fifteen. We make this five, and then we make this ten, and then we have a seven, and then we have a, a three, and we have finally a number nine. And here the radius will be also adjusted. This will be two. This can be left on five, seven, nine. 11 and 15 all right if I save this all right ignore that if I save this refresh and there you are so now you can see we have this very small bubble here and when we hover over it starts to become big and you can see here maybe something it starts to clip off items and this is not what we want I can imagine you are have this bubble and you don't want to clip this off so how do we solve the clipping effect here which is undesirable if you have this effect here you can see it's slightly clips off but if you hover over it it starts to clip off completely all right to do this we go here back and then we just go to the uh, chart types we click on bubble you can see here we have all of this here and we already have our structure and our setup all right but what we want to do here is we want to focus on the clip so what we're going to do here is basically indicate the clip and if you click on this you will see exactly how this works click on that it will indicate here how will you clip this. So what I want to do is I don't want to clip it at all. So we can just select clip here, put in comma, we say clip equals false. Save that, refresh, and now you can see here. Oh, 
it it doesn't work at all here let's solve that i was expecting it's supposed to work so then probably we need to put in here so we're going to do this just put in false or probably let's double check i guess that we need to put in a padding as well so i will show you later on what i'm talking about if this doesn't work we're going to put a padding on the layout so if i refresh here all right so the clipping should not work uh, should not appear the reason why it now appears is because if we open up our developer tab and let's look at the size of it you can see it clips because it just cuts away on the canvas it just the canvas is not big enough so we have to do one more setting here so we have this here probably then clip false would be fine and what i want to do here is i'm going to uh, adjust the layout in the options what we want to do is we want to give it some extra padding here because there's no padding and you can see here this is the reason why it clips off there's just no space if we have some padding between here it will work however if you would just say here padding on the canvas that will not work so what we're going to do in here we need to set up the padding in the options so we say here a uh, layout and then we can put in here these curly braces and then in here we will say padding when we can specify you want to specify the padding or you want to give it everywhere so if we would give it everywhere we can just say here uh, a 20 pixel padding everywhere if i save this now and refresh you can see now it works beautifully it creates a padding and now our clip doesn't cut off but maybe you say well what about this here now we have too much padding you can see here we have a padding everywhere maybe you're not satisfied with that because you say well i want to have the maximum space here only this i want to have a padding on because just to cover this all right to control padding specifically here you can do it in here as well put this in here say here the padding and then here we could say here padding would be a uh, right side only 20 pixels once i save this i'm going to remove this all and just say your padding falls by default on everything because it's already set on everything refresh now you can see we only have here the things or the basically the padding open up developer tab click here you can see we have your space while the other side do not have any space at all so this is exactly what you want the chart is as big as possible and this is how you can create a bubble chart and consider the clipping or at least avoid the clipping effects which is something undesirable because you will chop away a part of it thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in chart.js check out in the description box the link directing to my chart.js course where you can learn everything about chart.js and finally of course make sure you subscribe to my channel